Welcome back to the Anjo campaign. Last time we had a bloody but ultimately indecisive bridge battle where we failed to break through the stalemate with Huainan. We eventually sent armies around it and we were even able to get a battle outside of their capital where after a bit of draw out magic we captured it. So now we have forces behind the enemy's lines, it's time for them to react against us. We did see various armies moving back towards Anfang, the Huainan capital to perhaps counterattack. I could try and stop some of them with the armies I still have hanging around, but this one in particular needs to go back home. They're currently starving, apparently. I don't really know how the supply system works, so I don't even know how to get their supplies back. It just previously hasn't been that much of a problem. But we're going to try going and standing in our own territory, since that's probably a good idea. Luckily, we've got so many reserves on the way, we can just swap them out and quickly have new armies available. Also, with the enemy moving away from the standoff at Shouchun, we can start a siege and start building siege equipment. If they don't come back, that should now be an achievable siege assault. To the east, we've got a couple of armies hanging around, defending the crossing that used to be defended by the guys are sent to bypass the standoff, and they might as well also now advance as well. We can bring the front line down to effectively this area southeast of Shouchun, since that's sort of a choke point, so we'll go and defend there for now. In the Great River, and at sea in general, we've got naval action going on, which I started off last time. I'm probably not going to cover this all that much, because really it's just loads of these, lots of little fights against these tiny Sinclair navies. They've got loads of docks, and they're constantly building ships, so it's hard to actually pin all of these ships down and defeat them on the water. But we're not really being defeated ourselves, the enemy aren't pooling their ships together enough, so... Lots of order resolves in store there, as I said, I probably won't mention it much, unless it becomes particularly strategically important. Now for the all-important Huainan turn. What they do is move a couple of the armies that were moving south back up to the north, and now they're going to do a siege sally at Shouchun. This could be dangerous. I thought the army behind me wouldn't reinforce me because it only counts armies around the city as being in range. But no, it's considering this a battle at my position, so that's good. I get my reinforcements. The enemy have three armies, and I effectively have one because that second army needs to not be under AI control for us to have any chance. The reason that's particularly important in this battle is because we're standing on a bridge, as you may remember. It's actually a bridge right next to the city. So we're going to get a bridge defense, and we don't want the AI messing things up. Some pretty hefty commanders on the enemy side and tons of troops, but we are going to have the luxury of funneling them into a big column. So at least they're going to be under control. Their numbers won't count for all that much in that they can't surround us. But of course, they can still grind us from the front. They have a lot more melee troops than we do, so we can just lose the melee on the bridge and then they'll still get through. We need to count on our archers doing loads of damage before that happens. We also need to count on my men properly forming up, not happening right now. The enemy are advancing really slowly, which is nice of them. They're taking loads of arrows on the way in. Those initial halberds are just getting annihilated. Eventually, the big blobby mess will start. And you might think the battle's sort of over in terms of playing the game, but there's plenty we can do to micromanage. In particular, we want to try and get the archers to shoot a little bit further back in the blob, which is easier said than done. I think I mentioned this last time. The enemy units tend to spread out a lot, so if you target someone at the back, your archers still shoot the front, and they still mostly hit your own men. Undoubtedly, we're going to take some friendly fire here. The other thing we need to micromanage is our supply of melee troops. We're losing men pretty fast in these blobs, they're just huge messes where both sides are going to take extreme casualties. We need to make sure we keep the end of the bridge secure by moving in new troops as needed. Obviously we have a limited supply of new troops, especially compared to the enemy, so we're really just hoping that things go as planned. Right here you can see my heavy troops just getting absolutely annihilated, they're dying in the flashing numbers style, meaning they're dying super fast. Not much we can do there to save them. We just set up to receive the enemy again once they're dead and keep shooting those arrows. Somewhere in the mix we kill an enemy officer. I don't think this was actually a general. I think it was a captain among some horse archers or something. But anyway, it's having the desired effect. We start to see some routes nearby. The first wave that came across the bridge has pretty much been defeated. But that doesn't mean anything for the battle as a whole. 
will drive them away just in time to receive the next blob you can see coming over the hill at the back. As they go though, lots of chances to get some free shots with the archers and inflict loads more kills. The bridge already absolutely covered in bodies and this battle is just getting started. A fresh elite unit comes up on its own, we use our archers to take those guys down and prepare for the next wave. Now they're leading with some walking light cavalry. That's exactly what we like to see, they're holding up the rest of the army as well, giving us a great target to shoot at. Especially because we're now defending with a line of swordsmen. Now we've seen before, light cavalry are somehow really good against swordsmen in melee, even fighting statically. So, at least they're not charging, and at least they're not actually going to make it alive, thanks to our barrage of arrows. Several units were actually routed, trying to get to us, so we're making some good progress through the enemy army and keeping our men safe with all of our archers doing good work. We kill Ji Ling, who I think is one of Huai Nan's hero kind of officers. I'm not sure heroes get any particular distinction in this game, maybe a slightly bigger bodyguard or something. A few officers are marked as being special, on our side Zhang Ba, Gao Xun and Zhang Liao are our special officers. Anyway, the melee eventually begins as the enemy push through, and I notice that Yuan Shu himself is actually there, in the mix. This is the guy that caused this war, he's declared himself Emperor, that's the reason we were forced to fight Huainan. So I order my archers to fire a volley at him, and immediately, that's the end of him. The camera can't quite deal with it, but rest assured, he did go down. The traitor is gone, and we've probably gained a load of legitimacy by taking on this official challenger to the Han Emperor. We are truly servants of the Emperor, and deserve to be the new de facto ruling faction. We'll see to that much later on, I suppose. Right now, all we need to do is win this battle, and with Yuan Shu dead, that's going to make it easier. Right away, we do see some enemy units rout, including some of them routing right through our own men, which is handy. We'll get some free captures. Broadly speaking though, the melee is looking pretty bad. We're down to using out of ammunition archers in melee to make up the bulk of our men here. That means we'll be trading quite poorly with the enemy's actual units trying to break through. We need the rest of our archers who do have ammo to really make the difference by just pouring it on them. They're in such a big blob that we're going to get lots of hits, that's going to help us out, but their weight is almost too much for us now, they're starting to break through, they're pushing cav up, they're pushing spears up, things that can easily cut through the archers who are mostly holding the encirclement. At about this point, the uh, advisor announcer guy proclaims that the enemy are winning this battle and we're in trouble. Really, there was nothing I could do, I just had to somehow win, and I did. That's pretty much all the commentary we can do on that, because the enemy just handily started not attacking us with some units by pulling back, and other units started to rout and get annihilated. I guess with the death of the enemy's generals, even though we're losing that melee, we can still win it on morale, and as a few units rout, things suddenly get a lot better. The advisor comes back and now claims that we're winning the battle, he's changed his mind, and things just suddenly turned around at the last minute, so that's very handy. After a while, all of the enemy's melee troops were gone, just a few fighting on in routes and the odd fight to the death there in the remnants of the blob, and it was just loads of archers out on the bridge that we needed to take down. We we're going to have to charge forwards and attack them, and luckily for that purpose we had reinforcements from the second army. We finally got a load more swordsmen, and we'd always had our cav in reserve who could now start pushing across the bridge to fight the archers. With the officers dead, we don't have to kill that many to break through them. Did take a while because there were so many archer units just standing on top of each other here. It was a real slog, but eventually we killed enough of them for them to make way, and their formation breaks into the open ground behind them. We're going to want to chase them down, because this is actually a siege drawout of a sort. Any siege sally is a siege drawout. If you defeat the garrison army, then you actually get the city, even though we're actually not there at the moment. So, the Light Cav do their work, slaughtering everything on the way out, we get 90-something percent of the enemy army defeated, there's the final result. We lost about half of our men, and those losses were mostly concentrated in the first army, so that first army is now functionally useless, it's out of the game for a while, however, all three of the enemy armies got absolutely annihilated. Once we execute all the prisoners, there's not enough left, and all three are stack wiped, that means we take the city. The standoff is officially over, it's been a resounding victory that went just about as well as it could have.
We're going to need to leave an army in the city because they're very angry with us right now. Our first army is too weak to garrison it properly, so the second army plus some reinforcements goes in. That still wasn't enough to control public order, so the first army is now effectively disbanded. Some remnants of it will add to the garrison to get it up to strength. Now public order is okay, and what's left will go home. They're going to hang around in their own territory for a while, retrain and perhaps become part of someone else's army at some point. They have done their work, to be sure. Our two armies out in the field, off to the southeast, are just going to advance a little bit. We couldn't attack her fate this turn, so we'll just get near. It's heavily defended, so you don't want to rush into things anyway. And we also want to wait for that other army off to the west, standing on the bridge, to get involved as well. In the Huainan turn, they don't really achieve very much. They just shift around a bit. I think they're bamboozled by the sudden loss of Shochun, so their armies are just stuck standing around. That's fine by me, we can take the initiative. I'm bringing down a catapult from Zhuchang, I think, to go and attack this settlement to the southeast of Anfeng. It's only got a couple of guys in it, including, I think, their new faction leader. So with a catapult, we could suddenly break in without having a siege where the enemy could counter-attack. We are going to have to do a normal siege at Herfei. We set it up right here, get the equipment going. But now we can start leveraging the fact we have more numbers in the area after the enemy's recent huge defeat. First, I bring this army from the northwest to go stand near the army outside the city. Then, New Jin comes in to push it away. Now it's out of reinforcement range. We could even go after it, but there's no point. We'll just sit here with our three armies clustered together. Gonna to be nice and hard for the enemy to break that siege. And if they give us the chance, we'll try and get into the city. Now, though, the enemy pull a little stunt that I wasn't expecting. An army attacks the small force that had the catapult, so I thought fine, because our big army at Anfeng will reinforce. But it doesn't, as you can see. It looks like we were in reinforcement range, but no. I think when I inspected it later, there was a dip in the ground or something, so while it looked like I was standing one tile away from the city, it was actually two tiles, and one of the tiles is just really invisible from this particular camera perspective. Anyway, the result is we end up fighting this big enemy army with just this small group that was only intended as a reinforcement army. This is trouble. Luckily, the officer leading it isn't very good, so I guess losing him in the last stand doesn't matter all that much, but we really could use those catapults at the very least. We nearly had absolutely ideal troll terrain. There was this huge plateau on the side of a mountain that we could have set up on but this area, and actually a large portion of the map in general, including this okayish looking terrain over here, was all inaccessible. I think because there's no route to it from the enemy's deployment zone, you can't deploy up there. In the end then, we're forced to deploy on this weird looking shape to sticking off of a hill. Not really ideal terrain, I was expecting something a lot better from our mountainous situation. Still, we'll do what we can with it. We've got the catapults so they can fire off the edge of these cliffs without being attacked in melee, and that's going to be pretty effective, especially while the enemy are far away and we can actually shoot them properly. We'll also have our archers and swordsmen defending the narrow approach to our formation, meaning the enemy's numbers won't count for all that much. Once they're closer, I move the archers to the front to get a better shot, and we start raining down death on the advancing enemy, doing particularly well, especially with the catapults. I was worried that the enemy's many archers would simply shoot the catapult crew and put it out of action. Right now though, they're focusing on my heavy archers over here, and that's okay, heavy archers kind of resist arrow fire, so they don't die very easily, we'll just tank a lot of those arrows, and we will have to do that because the enemy definitely have the archer advantage. At the same time, our catapults continue to do good work, there's another juicy shot. More of their archers are stopping to set up and shoot at us, but again, they're not shooting at the super weak against archers catapult crew, but at the heavy guys at the back. That's what we like. Our commander Lu Ding is currently trying to sneak away from the battle. I was going to have him try to draw some of the enemy away from the main portion of our force, but he somehow, during that run, got hit by a volley of arrows and lost a load of men. Not even sure who shot him that far away from the enemy formation. Anyway, so he's run to the back corner of the map for now, while everyone else prepares to defend our little mound. You might note the enemy haven't actually gone up the most obvious route of attack to our position, and that's because I later discover in this battle that this little slope is also impassable. The enemy can only get to us around the back of this shape, and that's why they're doing such a weird manoeuvre to go all the way around to the other side with most of their units. 
Eventually, some of them start to arrive and we'll have to fight with what few men we have. Our two units of swords engage their one of spears. That's an okay matchup, but my flank attack down that little slope really wasn't as impressive, impressive sorry, as I would have hoped. And then their light cavalry very quickly outflank and rear flank my swords. My reserve unit's going to go right into battle to try and fight against them. Looting has failed to draw away enemy units as I intended as he walks around at the side of the map. Eventually though the AI actually did the correct thing in this decision, they sent just one unit after him, some light cavalry and they're, they're going to have a pretty good time even though my men are heavy cav who are good against light cav, we're outnumbered and we can't escape because we're slower than them. So just in that slogging match we're going to be in trouble. We are managing to hold the line here on the one slope that's accessible to our little plateau area and soon we get some good news somewhere in that melee we killed the enemy leader their captain that's going to help us out immensely that's exactly the sort of thing we need those cav that look like they've broken through are now routing and they route back out probably going to take a load of losses there excellent news if you can route a few more units the pressure will relent Lu Ding is not in a very good situation, the enemy aren't relenting on him, it's just him left alive from his unit. Somehow I was able to get him out of the melee and run away, and for whatever reason those light cav didn't actually pursue, they just forgot about him, and allowed me to run back to our formation. This is where I discovered that we can't use this slope, I thought I'll just ride up and rejoin our men to bo boost their morale, but no, it just doesn't happen. I noticed him starting to go around the cliffs and I was like, oh dear, we have to actually go through the enemy army to get Luding back to safety. He's in pretty much as much danger as possible, especially in amongst all of those archers. Any of them could just kill him at any time. Luckily, they're not right now. <laughs> they're just distracted by other things. So Luding's going to make a run for it off to the corner of the map, pretty much the only safe place for him right now. And we'll wait to see if we can get back to our men later. Our defense of the approach has been successful, but we've got a suffering from success moment. Our men, despite being on guard position, decided to run down the hill and chase the enemy as they went, and one of our units is now just spread out all over the place in amongst the enemy's general army, and they rout pretty quickly. There they go now, as Lu Ding makes his escape to the corner. So there we go, we've lost a massive portion of our very small defending force, suddenly and unexpectedly, certainly not what we need. The other men reform to continue the last stand on the hillside, and they're going to have a better time fighting downhill against Demoral and tired units. I switched the side that the catapult is facing since the enemy are now mostly over here. We'll set them up for some juicy shots on the enemy's archers who are themselves absolutely annihilating us. We can't really stop them from just raining arrows all over our formation right now. Here I managed to shoot my own men with the catapult because the, they routed just as I was firing at the unit trying to fight them. The enemy unit routed as well, so everyone's running away, I suppose that's better than the enemy breaking through there. However, another unit somewhere else has gone around my tiny line of defenders, and now have come into fight with my archers. The upsides we have to cling on to are that we've got heavy archers, who are okay in melee, and the enemy are wavering, even with a lot of their men still alive. Their tiredness and loss of their general has really impacted enemy morale. You'd think it wouldn't really go down because they're winning so much on the balance bar. That does give you a morale buff. But right now we do have a chance to rout units that are still intact and buy ourselves some breathing room. Even if it's just delaying the inevitable, the catapults are racking up quite a few kills shooting into those blobs of archers. So certainly we're making the enemy pay right here. What I didn't really understand is how I'm still alive and I think the answer is because a lot of the enemy archers are just glitched out, many of them aren't firing, and when they are firing they're shooting fire arrows at a target that's resistant to arrow fire, and that combined means we're just still alive, despite the fact they could easily just fire a massive volley and wipe out all of our infantry if they really wanted to. Things are going okay in the melee in that we are routing enemy units, but at this point we've lost pretty much everything, all of our own melee units are gone, so it comes down to our own archers just fighting in melee, and they're doing okay. With their heavy armor, they're able to resist enemy attacks, and with the enemy's low morale, they don't really press the issue all that much. We're continuing to hold our ground. Multiple units come up the hill, are routed, and then run away, and the catapults are still doing good work against the enemy's archers, who themselves are still, somehow, not killing us. 
Now's the time for Lu Ding to start sneaking back over. <laughs> Since things have cooled down just a little bit, he might actually be able to get back to our formation. On the way, he gets stuck in this enemy unit of archers. He could just die instantly if they turned and attacked him. Luckily, they're not too interested in that. He actually killed a couple of them before I ordered him to start going back the other way, realizing that if I run up the hill, they might actually shoot me, whereas if I run away, they'll continue shooting up the hill at the stuff that's just resisting arrow fire, and that is somehow how it ends up going. More units are charging up to face the archers, and somehow we're still holding out. In particular, we can use the catapults to shoot into the melees at point blank range, probably going to kill a few of our own men each time, but it also shocks the enemy and sends them falling back. So now we're down to the last handful of our army, but we are still holding the line. Lu Ding comes back for another round. This time I'm not trying to run past these enemies, I thought let's just attack them. They're not even paying any attention to him, so we are going to pick up a load of kills, just gradually cutting people away off the back of that archer unit. That's something, I guess, but it's not really helping. As for our men, well, they're still alive up there. The enemy are out of melee troops, it's just archers now, so all they can do is stand there and get shot and hope the enemy run out of ammo. <laughs> Meanwhile, the catapults continue to pull off great value. They're so much better than those ballistas, I think, in that regard. With Lu Ding, I decided to pull out of that one melee I was in and look for one that was easier to get a unit to rout. There was a squad of 11 guys hanging around, so I'm going to target them. The problem we're having though is that the enemy archers finally decided to just shoot the catapult crew and almost immediately they're all dead. Tried to move the catapults away to get them up the hill but we're going to have to drop the catapults I think on the way up, it's just not going to happen. Lu Ding is now in position to attack that little squad so we'll go after them and with our own archers we're just going to stand there and hope the enemy run out of ammo, that's all we can do. Lu Ding is somehow killed, they didn't even see what fired at him, maybe it was the squad that he was targeting, not quite sure, they're not facing the right way, so I didn't think they were paying any attention, but he's down, and that sucks. Now we're going to have a morale shock, and things already aren't going very well, so you can imagine morale is low. At least the enemy do actually start to run out of ammo. And as they send men up the hill to charge into melee, they just rout before they make contact. That's a very good sign, so we actually can win by waiting for the enemy to run out of ammo, as long as they all rout before they attack us, which very well may be the case. I decided though I'm not going to stand here and get shot to pieces, because we don't know how much ammo they actually still have, some of the units weren't really firing for the whole battle. I thought I'll charge down the hill and just rout them like that, since the enemy don't want to fight in melee, but as we saw, just for some reason my men routed after I gave the order, so it just didn't happen at all like I expected. I suppose they were under a lot of pressure. The last two catapult crew are made of sterner stuff and they fight to the very end, eventually being cut down, and that's the end of the battle. That really sucks because we actually almost won. If we had a bit more morale, if Lu Ding was still alive, or perhaps more importantly, if that unit of swords that went and got itself killed was still alive, and thus we had a lot more of our archers still alive at the end since they weren't forced to fight in melee the whole time, I think that would have been a winnable fight. As it stands, a few men escaped since they routed, so we do have a few men left alive from the group, but generally things are dead, and we'll have to see about avenging them in the next part.